Thank you, thank you, and, <clears throat> and welcome to everybody. Uh, for sure, most of my speech is, is shelved, but uh, and I'm, I'm honored to hear and, and be reminded of some of the sincere and dedicated people in the taxi cab business that have, for so many years, uh, been a staple uh, and st stable uh, a part of our tourism industry. And I do want to make a quick reflection of some of the previous speakers, if I could, and especially to the lady who had who had a previous issue with the cab service. And that's exactly our point. If you had an issue with the cab service, you certainly have a way to, to, to deal with it. There are remedies in place as opposed to what the options are now with Uber and Lyft. There are the alternatives are to, to dial 800 and, and call somebody in Washington or San Francisco to solve your problem. At least in this city, there is a method a method of dealing with any issue that's involved in the cabs. And I'm very grateful for that, even though I'm not in the cab business. And to the young man, the young leader man who made a comment assuming that our chief of police that woke up that day and decided to write his own rules and come out here and stand in front of the camera and, and condemn this and, and, and talk about the fact that he's going to enforce the rules. The rules were there before he woke up that morning, before he probably ever came to San Antonio. And that's all he was trying to do was enforce and make a statement of how serious the rules are, no matter what size city it is. And the rules have to be enforced. I, I can't emphasize it. I, and I support all the comments that were made. Chief, we're so honored to have you as our chief. And, and for, I mean, I stood so proud, and I, I didn't have to be in the military to believe that. I stood so proud by listening to you talk, yeah. to have to go through what you went through, just to enforce the rules that are in place, which is your job, your only job. And to the other gentleman from Uber, or that, that's standing up here, now, he didn't run out of time to speak, but I would say he forgot to mention, not only does Uber come in at the lowest level trying to attack the cab industry, but they are a, a notorious for developing different levels. If you don't confront them at the lowest level, you got to deal with them at the next level. He mentioned Uber Black. Uber Black is now the invasion side of the limo side. Now, I happen to own the limo, the big limo company in town, and quite frankly, we're not as affected yet but we will be because we keep up with the rule, with the, 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 all the commotion around the country, or should I say around the world, because that's exactly what they are, a worldwide company. They're, this is just the beginning of what they're about to do. If we let it get past this point, you can't even believe what's gonna happen next. And I'm about to, and I'm gonna question that young man because he didn't mention Uber Deluxe. Has anybody heard of Uber Deluxe? Have you? You didn't mention it. Well, Uber Deluxe is the next level, the third level, after they've invaded at the lowest levels, the third level is Rolls Royces and Maybachs because they just announced it in Dallas. They just started Uber Deluxe. So believe me, there's a madness and there's a, a plan behind this madness. They're going to different levels and if they get past this one, which they're attempting to crush, it starts the next level. So we're all involved, and we need to be very careful. They are a calculated invasion. Nothing short. They are a calculated invasion of our stable industry, period. That's what you have to understand. What a coincidence that they would come around Fiesta, our, our pride and joy, our, our very sacred event in this in our city, the timing is not a coincidence. They go around the cities, invading the cities at right just before their premium events. Case in point. And I believe someone's going to give me three minutes here. Someone did. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Case in point. At the Democratic National Convention, nobody had ever heard of Uber in, in, in Carolina. And Uber became a sponsor, a program sponsor. And in this program, they were prepared with 300 vehicles to take on and deal with the convention services. When we have an event like this, it takes us six months to get ready. We invest thousands of dollars preparing. 
training, getting vehicles, um, trying to meet the and, and staying within the rules, do everything we can to be legal, rent the correct vehicles, be prepared. We are totally prepared, and when we show up to our big event, we expect, based on the history, we know what to expect. A certain amount of business, a certain amount of pressure, a lot of things. Well, when they showed up in Cal Carolina at the National, the Democratic National Convention, and nobody in the limo or taxi business was prepared, imagine what happened when all of a sudden there was no business for the taxi service, or limited business for the taxi service, and all the people that brought in cars for two or three hundred miles because they were ready for that. And a week after the convention was over, they left town. That was the strategy. And this is how calculated these people are. Don't underestimate how deep their pockets are. She's bragging about $250 million. It's, it's in the billions. That's the fact. Their money's in the billions, and they will stop at nothing. Who does anything for free? They're doing it because, yes, they're going to rely on the individuals, the, the, the people that come up here that are looking for the part-time work. It is. And quit using the word ride-sharing because it's not. It is not ride-sharing. John made that clear. It's in every, every rule. It's not ride-sharing. And don't believe that it is. You can't do this for free. That's ride-sharing. they got ride-sharing lanes if you want to do it. Towns offer, you know, Ride sharing, but, but don't, don't confuse the two. It's it's for hire, and, and as long as it's for hire, it's in violation of our city ordinance, and we have to deal with it. Hundreds of thousands of dollars are being spent in this initial invasion, and I, I, I only mention it again because mm -hmm. they cleverly attacked Austin right before South by Southwest. And they cleverly attacked Houston right before the Houston rodeo, which is a big deal for them. This is really happening. These people are smarter. Listen, look, we're not the intellect of these previous speakers. Hey, they got master's degrees and stuff. Hey, I, I can't talk like these people. I can't even read what they're reading. But I, I, I guarantee you I got a lot of common sense. And, and we're, we're thousands of people affected by this intellectual uh, invasion. Listen, I want to be smart. But my kids are for that. I, I can't even open my, I don't know how to read my phone. But the fact is, I employ 200 people. And I, I wake up every day because I have to now to make sure that they're eating and that their families are provided for. That I understand. And you can't do that better than me. You're just smarter. But you don't have the common sense that it takes day in and day out. These people, their whole life depends on what's going on. Now wake up, world, because it is an invasion. It's an invasion, a calculated invasion of all the money in the world. Wherever the mud sticks on the wall, that's what they're going after. And if we show any weakness, they're going to continue. And yeah, I happen to like pink too. I just don't like it on guys. And I don't like it on cars. I mean, I, I, this is my personal preference. But for God's sakes, don't throw it in my face. I saw a car this morning with the pink mustache, and it was halfway, it was dragging the ground. It went this way. I'm sure he can't see it. But if our cars had something like this, they're pulled over. It's a problem. A violation today in our industry is not misdemeanor. It's criminal. Is it not, Gary? Our, if I get a ticket, it's not a misdemeanor anymore. It's a $500 fine. Why? Because... It's criminal. What the rules are tough. And I get it. I have no problem with it. I have no problem. And nobody does. We just do our thing. We pay our dues. We pay our we do what we do because too many people depend on it. A hundred thousand people in this town alone absolutely depend on the tourism industry. And we're the first people they, they when the people land in this airport, they get in a cab. The important people get in a cab, or they get in a limo, or they get in a bus. But we're the first people to see them, and the, the last people on the way out. I'm sorry. 